What's up everybody, DLifeHD here, and today I will be reviewing White Knight for iOS and Android, but it's also available for other systems as well. Are you a fan of the horror thriller slash mystery genre? If you are, you'll want to stick around to see what I have to say about this game. Is it any good? Stay tuned and find out. First, let's discuss modes. There's only one mode in this game and that's story mode, so let's go through all the settings and talk about them instead. First, if you go to the options button, you get the option to highlight objects, which lets you see the objects that you need to interact with clearly by having them shine and stand out compared to the rest of the environment. Then you have the option of adding a virtual pad, which is going to come in useful. I'll discuss this more in the controls and gameplay portion of the review. The other option is enable inputs tank, which I didn't use. I can't really comment on it. You then have the collections. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's a collection of everything you collect in the game, from journal pages to news clippings to photos and notes. It's nice that you get the option to look all that up in one place. Lastly, you have a bonus section where you get to look at the game artwork that's unlockable as you proceed throughout the game. It's pretty cool. They're hand-drawn stuff, and I'm guessing this was artwork that was made while they were producing the game. With that said, let's talk about controls and gameplay. The controls are decent. They have two options, though I wish this had M5 support. With that said, let's talk about the two options that you do get. First, let's talk about the touchscreen option. At launch, it actually only came with this option, so I played the beginning of the game with the only type of control being tap support. You pretty much just tapped on the screen where you had to go and it would take you there. This works pretty decently, but it's sometimes not fast enough. So I was happy when they updated the game and added joystick controls. The joystick is pretty decent. It's a dynamic joystick, so it'll end up wherever your finger lands. The only problem I had with it was that sometimes your character gets stuck and sometimes your finger slips off a little bit. And since the speed of your character depends on the amount of real estate you have, it sometimes ends up going slower than you would want it to go. This is only a problem when you're being chased by the ghost of Selena. I mean, any mess up and you'll get caught by her. Although the game also gives you the option to sneak around and avoid her. In terms of gameplay, there are a ton of puzzle elements in this game. One is that you have to turn the lamp to different faces in the library. And once you have the lamp on them, you get to stab the faces with a knife. <laughs> that in turn allows you to open up a door to get to your next objective. And this is how most of the game is played. You have to avoid the darkness by finding matches everywhere. If you run out of matches, and sometimes you will, trust me, music starts playing more and more eerily and the area starts to get darker and your pulse will get heavier until Selena catches you. I'm telling you, it's pretty scary. It's probably not a kid-friendly game, especially when you play it in the dark. Man, does it get scary. Sometimes you get some jump scares and Selena just appears out of nowhere. <laughs> it's insane. Up next, Interface design and graphics. The interface is simple and it matches the 2D style of the game except that it has little color. The orange buttons stand out in a mostly black and white environment. The buttons also have that grunge feel that match the scary feel of the game. The artwork on the intro screen and setting screen is cool but a little ominous as well. Especially that knife and especially when you've just been caught by Selena, it's scary. The in-game graphics are really interesting. They're completely black and white in a noir style in 3D, but because it's completely black and white, it looks like it's a flat 2D plane. It's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully by seeing the gameplay, you'll understand why I'm saying a little better. The art style really fits though, because you're trying to avoid the darkness, so it's much easier to spot when it's just completely black and white, no gray area. I feel like the art style also adds to how scary the game is. Sometimes you approach a completely dark area and light your match and suddenly Selena appears. It's crazy! At first when I started playing the game, I was having trouble trying to see where I was going, but you begin to get used to it. And to be honest, it's supposed to feel like you're fumbling around the area. So job well done there. All right, music and sound. The music, as I mentioned above, is really eerie, and it matches the gameplay. The musical score is quite nice. It mostly plays at the intro, when you're attacked, and after you die. 
the sound portion of this game is where it really picks up because the sound effects are insane and enhanced. Everything from footsteps to rustling to floor and door creaks and the thundering sounds from the outside, even when the ghosts attack you, the sound of that struggle is really freaky. The worst part is when there are random knocks on doors and doors open by themselves, it's cray cray. Last but certainly not least, story. The game first starts you off driving a car down a winding road. You then unfortunately wind up getting into a car accident, you wake up really groggy, hurt, and you find a house where you want to get help. As soon as you arrive at the house, you notice that it has a built-in cemetery. Personally, that would have been my cue to get the heck out of there. Once you get into the house, you try to use the phone, but as always in any typical horror story, it doesn't work. You start making your way across the house, and little do you know that this is one messed up house. As you start making your way through the house, you find little notes and diary entries that tell you what exactly happened and what is happening. Apparently the story is set around the time of the Great Depression and the notes really make you feel bad for the characters as they tell you the struggles that they're going through. Kind of as an added insult to injury, you discover that this is the house of a killer that is only abducting and killing women he becomes obsessed with. Unfortunately, one of those women is someone named Selena and you have to discover what happened to her. So, can you make your way through this super creepy house and find out exactly what happened to this beautiful singer named Selena? That's up to you. All in all, this is a really decent horror mystery game on mobile. I don't play horror games often, but I'd say this is probably one of the best horror mystery offerings that you'll get on iOS and Android. So the question is, is it worth your $5? In my experience with the game, I'd say yes. The story is captivating, the puzzles and gameplay are challenging, and I believe you'll want to play it till the end. The story will take you about four to six hours to complete, depending on how many times you die. So I have to say, this game is D-Life HD approved. All right, my beautiful peoples, thanks for joining me. Let me know by commenting below if you agree with me or my opinions. If you like this video, remember to smash that like button because it really helps me out a lot. I'm also adding Amazon affiliate links in the description for things like Steam, Apple App Store, and Google Play Store gift cards, just in case you plan on buying this game or other games and you need a gift card. For every purchase you make, I get a little bit in return and that helps the channel out a lot. If you want more content like this, remember to subscribe because I release mobile game content like this pretty often. Also, remember to follow me on Twitter and Facebook for daily game and music release updates. Love you guys and peace.